What's up, dude? How's it going, man? You yeah. still Skyping with Eva? No, no, no. She just, she just said goodbye. You have a cold? Yeah, dude. Can you hear my voice? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All sniffly and stuffy. Wow, man. I cannot... My, my English is probably very bad, too, because of that. We were talking about, yesterday about how... Which picture do you prefer the most? This is true. Um... I don't know, Ramallah on the, the Noxa day when I saw this guy, that was definitely yeah. the craziest. That's that's my best too. That's my best. That's definitely the craziest day. Yeah. Getting tear gas like seven times, it better be worth it. <laughs> it just better be worth it, man. Yeah. So are you, are you going to talk about Egypt at all in the project or just um, the Palestinian-Israeli conflict? Anything you want. Man. Well, let's, let's get the basics. Uh... But there's a motivation to go to Israel with Palestine and, and photograph, and what the, does the idea to put a, to attach a film camera to the camera, what what that that came from? Well, with the video camera it, it really helps. Um, well, obviously for our documentary, but for me to be able to um, get an idea of the the whole picture, uh -huh. you know when. When I'm photographing, I'm only focusing on the one subject, uh -huh. but it's nice to look at the video after and see the whole perspective and how other people are reacting to me. I don't know, plus having the, the, the actual raw photographs with the video, I think is really powerful. You know, people will say, you know, they'll look at a picture and say, oh, I wonder what it was like to be there, but I think the video does that more on yeah. a personal and how uh, And how do you think it was to be there? Was the sensation now that it you're back home and you're living another life. Oh my god, it's like such an adrenaline rush being there. I would hate to just be photographing just because I'm an adrenaline junkie. There should be more to it than that, but... Ah, uh, but it's a good, that's a good reason. That's the people live for yeah. adrenaline. But you being back here and I'm just working at like a bakery <laughs> and like it's so like peaceful and there's nothing... No one really cares about anything that's going on. Yeah. Just, just, just to get paranoid, like entry into buses, you look at that everyone, like, kind of, <laughs> yeah, just to get that? Kind of, a little bit, man. Yeah. I know, I think, like, is, should I get on this bus or no? No, oh, it's okay. Never mind. <laughs> Why? Why is that? I don't know, man. I don't, it's just like, I think that something like that will always stick with you. And especially if I'm going to continue doing, being, you know, trying to be a war correspondent in photojournalism, uh -huh. I think I, I'm going to have to just get used to that all the time, whether I'm there or not. You get used yeah. to what? Sorry. Um, being, keeping on your guard and like making the right decisions for your yeah, safety. Yeah, yeah. Not only safety, man, for the, for the photograph too. Do you know the, fam yeah. the famous question of uh, the photographer? If if you see, you see the picture of a, of a man drowning, what would you yeah. do? Photograph is a zoom lens or a fixed lens? <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's good. Man, that's tough. I don't know. Like, everyone asks me that. You know, would you, why wouldn't you just help the person instead of photographing them? Uh -huh. But if, I don't know, if there's other people there, obviously if there's no one else there and the guy's going to die, then I'll help him. But uh -huh. if there's other people trying to help, like, too many people trying to help can just like cluster it up and make it worse. I don't know, man. Those the whole kids. situation is just like a cat and mouse game, though. And it's like a big brother, little brother mentality. Because they're like family. They have to live with each other. They use the same currency. They're forced to live with each other. So it's like a little picking on each other there, picking each other there. Like with someone like like U.S. and Vietnam War, uh -huh. it's like we're complete strangers, so we'll just like kill each other. Uh -huh. And then like, and then it's over. Like I told you though, when uh, when me and Jeremy were in Ramallah on the the Naxa day, uh -huh. the IDF soldiers had like a big post on top of this building, uh -huh. and uh, you know the, the Palestinians were like throwing rocks up at them, and one of the Israeli soldiers caught the rock and then started dancing like, oh look what I, got. Uh -huh. and then the Palestinians started dancing, and it was like a little like, brief moment of happiness and, like, kind of joking around. I don't know, the Jews have a right to be there, though, but what they're doing now is, like, almost kind of similar to, like, the Holocaust. It's an ethnic cleansing is what they're doing. Apartheid. The, the ghetto. Yeah, exactly. 
ghettos are exactly like the wall. Exactly. I mean, I wouldn't. It's obviously not as serious as the Holocaust, but no, when no. they go into people's houses and evict them, and uh -huh. you know, go in and just kick them out in the street for no reason, you know. they're trying to claim neighborhoods back for themselves. So, if Palestinians, they have no structure, they have no government. It's controlled by. They have no chance, no opportunity. Yeah. I don't know. I'd be pretty pissed if I woke up in the morning uh. and I didn't like like Hebrew or Jewish people and I had to use money that's all written in Hebrew. Do you think, do, do, would you say that the revolution is over? Or is, is it still going on? Um, it's definitely still going on. I mean, until they get a democratic government in, which is what the people really want, then it's not over. Uh -huh. But it's like more than halfway over, I think. Yeah. You know, getting a dictator out that's been in there 30 plus years, that's, that's huge. <laughs> Yeah. Huge. In terms of how long, how old Egypt is, 30 years, not, it's nothing. Like they had millionaire empires and ancient empires yeah. and they, they just had a dictator for 30 years. I think they can handle a lot. Yeah. I don't know. I think even everywhere in the Arab world, they're really starting to see like, you know, what's happening you know, in Libya and everything, that dictatorship isn't good. So I think it's putting out a good message, which is good. But I guess, like, with the news, man, sh shit travels fast. So as soon as they see one per one country, like, taking over, then, you know, then they'll probably follow. I don't know. I feel like I'm not saying enough about the whole conflict. There's got to be something else. No, I think it's interesting about, more, more interesting than the, the whole uh, contest is the revolution in, in uh, the Arab world because it's so much bigger, no? <laughs> yeah, dude.